Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. Behind me, I have a Model 3 Tesla. We're going to install this auxiliary screen, which is gonna show us the most important information right in your field of view. Plus, it's gonna add some features. It's also compatible with the Model Y. Let's go. So you might be wondering, Don, did you buy a Tesla? No, sorry, Elon, I did not. Uh, this belongs to my neighbor. He's been gracious enough to let me do the install and review this product with you today. So this is a nine inch LCD IPS display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 720 and it's Linux based. So it's gonna be much more stable than something that may be Android. It has synchronized day and night modes. So depending on what type of light we have outside, it's going to shift from a day mode and a night mode. This is gonna add the feature of CarPlay compatibility as well as Android Auto. This device supports your original steering wheel control functionality, which is a bonus. The installation of this product is gonna allow us to do a seamless, non-destructive install, keep everything looking factory or OEM, and not have wires hanging around all over. We have audio output with a built-in speaker, Bluetooth connectivity, and a USB connection on the side. All right, let's get into the install. First, we wanna take off these decorative side panels. You could use a rag like I am. They supply this tool as well, but we just don't want to scratch anything. And that comes off very simple. And so on this side, it's a little tighter. I'm going to use a, a more rigid tool, a little less flexible. No damage. Okay, this is the cringy part, but we got to undo the clips for this piece. Okay, so you see these little holes starting right here. You want to count all the way along. The instructions say hole number 37. You want to start feeding these wires, but I took a square and I measured the opening where dead center would be with the steering wheel. And I figured out that it's actually number 36, 37, 38, and 39 that you want to fish the two wires through. Now you want to install the backing plate with the screws provided. Okay, we don't want to over tighten these screws. Just make sure they're, they're firm. You don't want to strip the holes. Look at the fit and finish. It's very, very close. It's got the same, same texture or smoothness to it. I think it fits uh, really well. And that's one of the things that impresses me uh, with this install so far is it's clean. So there's some clips just under the glove box here that you need to remove. Um, should be pretty easy. So here they are right here. It's actually easy enough that I can use my fingernail to pull the pins out. But if you have a tool, you can use that too, but it's pretty easy. There should be one, two, three, and four. Okay, we've got our four clips out. And then we should be able to pull this tree out of the way and just lay it down there. Now we're about to connect the harness to make this interface. I'm just gonna lay some rags down because you only have a couple minutes to connect everything. If you don't do it within the allotted time, your Tesla might think that there's something wrong. And then you just have to shut everything off, which is not a big deal. Wait 15 minutes, turn it back on and it should be fine. Uh, but you only have a couple of minutes if you're gonna start playing with these harnesses. So I wanna make sure that the screen is close by so I can connect it quickly. And then I can clip everything back in after. So I'm just gonna fish these wires up through here first. So we can have everything go as quickly as possible once we start plugging in the harness. So installing this harness is the hardest part. It's going to be difficult to film, but there is a box back there and there's a gray harness you need to unplug. It will then plug into here and this will plug into where we take the gray harness out. So again, that's tough to film. Um, it is part of the instructions that they give you, um, but that's what I'm working on next. So as a precaution, we did turn the car off. So we're going to have the car off while we hook up the harness. 
That wasn't the easiest thing to do. I had to lay the seat all the way back, take off my shoes, and I was able to unplug the original harness, plug in the piggyback, tie it together. And now we've got our wires just loosely hooked up here. We plugged the screen in, so we're about ready to fire it up and just test everything turns on properly, and then we'll clip everything down. If we did everything right, it should be turned on. Ah, there we go. Would you look at that, hey? Okay. So it appears everything is correct. We're just going to lay this wire down, clip everything back in, and then we'll start playing with the features. Okay, that's in. So I got that bottom tray put back on. Now for the last piece. All right, let's have a closer look at how to make this thing work. So you slide over here, you can see the gauges which are on, Apple CarPlay and settings. So we're gonna go to settings. Here you can pick model three or model Y. We're in a model three. We're gonna leave it in Celsius because we're in Canada and we're crazy like that. And then for CarPlay connection, you have uh, CarPlay, Android Auto, normal, which is a split screen or full screen. We're gonna leave it on the split screen for right now. We have our mode for auto day and night. So you were looking at daytime mode. I'll show you what nighttime mode looks like. So we're just gonna go back here. That's nighttime mode. You can see a difference. If we leave it in auto, it will actually do whatever the car is doing for its internal screen. Now this is really cool down here. We can change the color of the car indicated on some of the graphics. So let's say we had a black Tesla. We would go like that and we would go back here and anytime the car is shown, it'll be the new color. So there's a black one in this case. Just change it back to white. And then over here we have our time zone, our time format and our steering wheel controls, whether we want to have them to be on and work with the interface or off. Now with the steering wheel controls, you can have them on. I found it a little bit confusing, but I'm not a Tesla expert, but if I was to leave the steering wheel controls on, I'm controlling things on the screen here, but then it's also doing some things over here. So again, I'm not the Tesla expert. Uh, my neighbor could probably figure it out over time, but I'm just gonna leave it off for right now. Um, but it does have the ability to control your media, your tracks, your volume and stuff with this knob, and then this one to navigate some of the menus. But because it's touch screen, I think it's easier just to touch what you want it to do in those instances that you're gonna need to interface with it. All right, so I'm gonna show you the day and night mode again, but I think it looks better in the dark for what I'm about to show you. So we're just gonna to go to night mode. And then we're going to get back to our main screen here. Now, you notice the car there. If I was to turn on my lights. So we push the light button there, and now you can see the lights. We'll turn them off. And you can see they're off. Now we will signal left, we'll signal right, turn on our high beams. So all your indicators work at the same time, which is really cool. You probably noticed too, we have our speedometer here, we have our battery charge, we have a digital speedometer readout, we have our time, we have the gear that we're in, we have all the indicators across the top, we have our temperature, and we have our trip meter, our odometer, and our range. For this gauge here, this is your regenerative braking and this is your power usage. It's actually nice having it in a big format like this. You can see it much better. On the screen, you normally just have a little indicator right there. So this automatically starts searching for a Bluetooth connection. So we connected my neighbor's iPhone already. So we're already connected to CarPlay. We're going to switch over to CarPlay now. And you can see we have CarPlay as you'd expect to see it. We can browse, we can go to maps, we can you know go to the settings and pick all the CarPlay settings that we would like. Choose some wallpaper here just to show you. There we go, we changed the wallpaper. So that's really cool. Plus it still gives you a split screen showing you some of the uh, driver UI 
Okay, quickly, a couple more things to look at. This is your Tesla user interface. So we have the car there. Again, I'll do the lights demonstration. You can see the animation of the lights turning on. You can turn them back off. You can swipe up. This is our following distance. We can actually adjust that. Uh, you can adjust it with the steering wheel controls or you can do it on the main screen of the Tesla. And then we have our door open indicator. So we'll just open a door here. You can see the passenger door opened and then we didn't quite close it tight enough. There we go. And then we have our tire pressure, but we have different wheels on here. So the tire pressure is not registering. That's why it's not showing up. And then we go back to our main screen. So my neighbor's saying that he actually likes the Apple CarPlay better than the media app that would be on the Tesla. You get the album art and you just get more features. And uh, then you get to keep your map completely open and it's not partially covered. And you have everything right there. All right, as you can see, it's all installed. I think the fit and finish is fantastic. I think it's a, a nice little add-on for those people that like those gadgets and they like that tech, this might be for you. I don't even own a Tesla. Now I wonder if I should get a Tesla so I can get that screen. Who knows, maybe that's something to add to the channel. Anyway, all kidding aside, uh, thank you to the neighbor for letting me uh, use this for the install today. And if you wanna get yourself one, go to onecarstereo.com, enter in the promo code Dawn's Life, and maybe get yourself one. But if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.